Hello and welcome to another video from Speedmaster 101, that's me. And I get asked a lot, uh, what's the best Speedmaster to buy for the first time? And in my opinion, it is the 145022-69. So we're going to call that the 69 model. And the 69 is great because it has an 861 movement. So pretty much all watchmakers can can deal with that and um, it has it's at the crossroads of value uh, vintage attraction and availability so there's plenty to choose from on the market even though it may not feel like it sometimes you do have to look a bit these aren't rolex and um, they come in a wide variety of qualities so if you've got about, I don't know, three, four thousand dollars to spend on a vintage watch, you should be able to find a 69. It'll be, it'll have some problems at that level. Uh, but they can go all the way up to twelve thousand dollars for a black dial version or even more for a brown dial. All dependent, of course, on the quality. But first, we're going to look at what is the 69. So I'm going to remove these out of the way, uh, these out of the way and bring in the least valuable 69 here on the table. And this is a later 69. Uh, but I'm going to go through what all 69s should have. All 69s should have the black dial, although sometimes it's faded brown, with a step. So the step runs all the way uh, around the sort of... Hmm, first sort of fifth of the dial as it were uh, it just cuts through the top of the loom markers and the loom markers themselves run to the minute track not to the very edge of the dial like a earlier watch the there are three lines of text with professional and t swiss made t at the bottom it's in an asymmetric case which means that the pushers and crown are slightly protected and uh, the case back is smooth. Uh, this one has lost a lot of definition of the engraving only. Now that engraving is an acid etched hippocampus with the word Speedmaster. A better example of it would be here. So let's just show you the, the case back. Uh, this differs from the later case backs which are uh, we refer to them as stamped or medallion case backs uh, with the NASA uh, recommendation. The 69s also had two uh, further case back variations which we're not going to look at here because what I'm trying to uh, tell you about is the standard 69 and why I think it's such a good thing to buy if it's your first Speedmaster. Uh, this is another 69 also with a black dial. This is probably the uh, best 69 I've ever um, had through my hands. It, uh, it belongs to a friend of mine now. Uh, this one has the dot over 90 bezel and the one I showed you just before has the dot next to 90 bezel. So here we got a pretty good idea of the two overall looks that we're going to get from a 69 Speedmaster and the 69 is 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 available they, they they made quite a lot of them they probably made more 69s than they made 71s uh, the 71 differs from the 69 only in the case back and it also had a step dial so the first thing when you're looking at a, a 69 is is it correct Secondly, we'll then look at the quality, provided the watch passes the correctness test. So now we can look at the quality of the watch. And this is the fun bit. I mean, the uh, establishing whether the watch is correct is super important and, and difficult to do if you don't know what you're doing, which is why I make these videos and write the website. But it's actually quite simple and straightforward. Um, it helps to handle a lot of watches, as I have done, so it becomes second nature to see whether a watch has a problem or not. And, but I'm much more interested in the quality. So when I look at a watch, um, 
I have a standard set of protocols, which if you've seen the very first video I made with my iPhone sideways and all the wrong, uh, we start with the dial and I look at the color of the dial. So when I say the color of the dial, I'm looking at the body color of the dial. So everywhere it's not painted or printed, um, I'm looking at the actual paintwork, if you like, or the, 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 the texture of the dial and the color of that dial. And, and these are both black dials. You can see that. But you can also see that they're different colors. The actual body color is different. This is a graphite black and this, well, it's not graphite black. <laughs> it's a slightly different black. For me, this is a more attractive black. And who would have thought that you could go down this rabbit hole of different color blacks in a black dial, but you can especially with these Amiga Speedmasters. That's why I have a lot of fun with them. So we're going to concentrate on this watch first, which is a later uh, 69. And I showed it to you earlier in the back. It, uh, the back of this one has uh, lost some of its engraving. And it's a very uh, attractive dial, this. The loom is slightly greenish. Uh, it's not unusual for these later 69s to have this slightly greenish loom. So let's go back to my methodology, which I often jump ahead, uh, as indeed I just did. So the, the color, it's all black. But if I were able to show you close-up photos of this dial, you would see um, a, a distinct lack of blemish. <laughs> now, these dials uh, don't always survive in a flawless capacity. Now, my background is diamond grading. So I trained as a diamond grader. So the first thing I do is put a loop on everything. There's my loop system loop, which I love. I put a loop on everything and I go around each plot with my eye and I check for any blotch or spillage of binder from the loom or any leakage of oil from the holes where the hands enter. And this watch doesn't have any and this will explain why some 69s this this is a late 69 which i value at about four thousand uh, pounds some people might say oh no uh, uh, a 69 with uh, a dot next to 90 bezel and slightly greenish loom that's worth two and a half thousand pounds that may be the case but i'll bet you i can find a few blotches on the dial so for me, it's always worth overpaying to get a clean dial because they're so very, very rare. Um, next, I check the loom and I make sure that the loom does not show any evidence of... Um, there's, there's several words we can use here. You can have relooming where the loom has been entirely scraped off and then reapplied. And I'm going to put up an example here uh, this is a watch uh, offered by a Melrose, uh, I think he's mostly, he's a vintage watch dealer. Um, anyway, uh, very straight guy, uh, sometimes uh, uh, perhaps has Speedmasters that um, uh, uh, are offered for a little more than I would say uh, I would pay for them. And this particular one, you can see straight away, all the loom material has gone from it. It's, a, it's another 69. All the loom material has gone. And this uh, is, is called sometimes by uh, traders and collectors as a washed dial or a scraped dial. I just call it a dial without loom. It's an absolutely prime candidate for a genius re-loom. And so that's what I think someone should do to that watch. Coming back to this watch, we can see that the loom is thick and um, it's well ap applied and there's no question in my mind that that is a factory loom dial. So the quality of this dial is excellent. It's absolutely excellent. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. The print's all intact. Um, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's, it's a very, very attractive dial. Even the greenish loom. And I've been looking at this watch a few days while I, I make this video. And, and the more I look at it, the more I like it. And by the way, that is a absolutely crucial thing to remember if when you're looking at anything the more you look at it the more you like it that is the sign of a really special thing if the more you look at it 
the less you like it, even if it's a, I don't care if it's a hundred thousand pound two nine one five. If the more you look at it, the more you think, oh, I didn't really like that so much. Oh, I forgot it had that mark, or uh, I wish it just looked a little, you know, less dry in the dial. You know, that's a sign of a bad watch. Avoid it. If if the less, if the le if you like it less every time you watch, uh, see it, uh, run away. So this watch. I love this watch actually. <laughs> it's a great watch. Let's compare it to the very, very fine uh, 69 that belongs to my friend Michael. And uh, I should probably ask him if I can put it in the video, but it really is the most spectacular example of a 69. If you find one of this quality, it's worth a very great deal of money. And the reason is once again, when we look at the dial, it's completely flawless. The body, I'm talking about the body of the dial, but this one also has these beautiful uh, yellowish um, creamy loom uh, uh, markers, which are intact, without damage, no reapplication. Absolutely beautiful. Prints intact, everything. Everything is perfect. So another excellent dial. If you find a watch with an excellent dial, you can forgive the other things uh, that are wrong with it, in my opinion. So going back to this one, we look at the quality of the bezel. Now, when I look at the quality of the bezel, it, it, what I do is I count the number of uh, chips in it. This one has none. This one, even though it's an extremely valuable one has a little mark here now on a dot over 90 bezel i don't really mind the mark and the reason why i don't mind the mark is because um, that particular mark is on the inner lip of it uh, is very hard for a counterfeiter to reproduce now the counterfeit bezels have slightly different fonts and slightly different uh, metal retaining rings and slightly different positioning of some of the, 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 the printing. I, I trust myself to buy a fine dot over 90 and verify that it's real. But would I trust myself to verify one of your bezels without handling it? Mm, I'm not sure. I could give you a good idea and a few pointers. Um, what I'm not about to do is publish my um, library of counterfeit dot over 90 bezels that I have, which um, I've acquired at some, <laughs> some expense over the years. Every time someone comes out with a new bezel, I buy it. And uh, it's the only way, it's the only way you know, you have to have uh, samples to, to tell, in my opinion. Um, still, there are other people much cleverer than me that tell me that they can, they don't need them. Good for them. So uh, we're looking at the quality of the bezel. So I count the blemishes. So this one has one. Now, with the bezels, I also am hyper aware that there is a variation in the bezel printing. So you get a variation of the print definition and you get a variation of the color. It, the color can fade or it could be bleached or it could just be from a batch that appears to have changed color over time. So be aware that uh, just because it's a dot over 90 bezel doesn't make mean to say it's going to be a three, five, four, five thousand dollar bezel. Um, let me show you another bezel, another dot over 90 bezel here. So this one, when we're looking at quality, this one is, I would say, fair to good. Uh, good is quite generous. <laughs> it's fair. It's got lots of dents, uh, of dings, sorry, of scratches in the metal. Uh, no serous dents, which is a plus. Uh, the printing is clear, but the body color of the bezel is slightly faded, very slightly faded. It's, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I wish it was better, but it's not. Um, I'm going to show you a third example of a bezel, probably original to the watch. And uh, this has a couple of dings and things in it. And it's very important with the dot over 90 bezels to really get stuck into them and find out what it is you have. What you don't want to do is to have the watch delivered and 
you'd be surprised that um, somebody's taken a magic marker to, to the one of the black bits and you don't know. Uh, that's what people do. They use, um, they use uh, felt tip pens or they use uh, humbral paints. So the bezel is an important part of the valuation and if uh, I think the golden rule if for most people watching this video is that if the bezel looks really really good unless the rest of the watch is really really good also then um, I would I would really worry that it was a counterfeit and this watch is really 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 good all over so I'm not surprised to see it has an absolutely fabulous bezel um, it, 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 it's the whole thing about this watch is just lovely it comes on the bracelet and everything so we have now done the dial and the bezel the next thing we will go on to is the case and for that I'm going to go and get a few props to show you now we are going to look at the case now the case of a 69 is um, asymmetric as I mentioned and it has cutouts for the crown and the uh, pushes this case is a spare case I have um, and I keep it primarily because um, it's a great example of, of, of a, an overpolished case so uh, it's going to be quite hard for me to show, but I will put up photos. This one has been slightly repolished, and this one has been very repolished. And you can see that the finish on the lugs on the one in this one is it's blurred. The finish is blurred, and they, it looks like they've run over it in sandpaper. This used to be the kind of thing you would see a great deal in the United States. Um, they, they they were quite heavy on the polishing wheel some some I mean it's broad generalization but um, I only mention it because I call them American watches it's grossly unfair my apologies to all the American collectors and watchmakers but I don't know I'm not very correct so that's an example of an over polished case polishing polishing is my pet uh, Look, I, I want a watch that has been as little uh, touched as possible. Of course I do. Of course I do. But if I only bought a watch where I believed there was no polishing whatsoever, um, it would be hard to find um, uh, any watches to buy or have fun with or because Speedmasters are almost all polished um, to some extent. They... You send them for service, the watchmaker is going to clean them up a bit. He can't help himself. You know, the, these. This one probably hasn't had anything. But what I do look for in a case is the definition of the lines. So going back to our over-polished case, you can see that the lines are not there. The definition is not there. Um, the, the line is quite sharp here. And this one has the remnants of the brushing. And here is a, a, another 69, very nice brown dial. We'll, we'll have another look at that in a minute, but you can see that there's very slight evidence of polishing here. Now, should I dismiss that watch when I'm looking at it? Well, we can see that this has a beautiful brown dial. Do I want to miss out on the chance of owning a brown dial just because the case has a little polishing? Well, in an ideal world, I would buy a brown dial with a perfect case. But the world isn't like that, and I would like to actually own a brown dial. So instead of sitting on the forum going, I'm only going to buy top quality watches, great, good for you. Meantime, I've got one. So um, if, we, if we sort of take a step back and talk about the dial again, just quickly, this one has really, um, I want to say bad loom. If you focus in on the loom plots of this, it's, um, 
it makes me wonder did someone uh, stabilize it adjust it or or do something to it now it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether they did or whether they didn't the loom plots are not of the same quality as this watch or indeed this watch um, everything about this watch is better than this watch uh, the loom is crisp and clear and clean and the loom here is dirty and lumpy and possibly ill applied possibly but of course um, the other thing about loom and I know we've, we're backtracking a little bit into the loom again because it's so important here's a brown dial and the loom here is sort of slightly algae greeny do you know is that good or is that good well <laughs> you know in an ideal world I would choose a watch that didn't have plots that look quite like this slightly dirty but if you look closely at this dial it's a beautiful swirly chocolate dial and it's it's a lovely thing again the the condition merchants are you know that they're, they're absolutely right go for the top condition the thing is top condition is going to cost you an arm and a leg and that's fine if you can afford an arm and a leg great go for it and only buy top condition but you'll probably only end up with one watch um, in your life and do you know what that's absolutely fine for people um, I'm, I'm more of a hunter I like to you know <laughs> buy lots of watches as you can see <laughs> so there we have the case um, we've covered the case uh, make sure that it looks right the dangers in the case are you so and this uh, this uh, hippocampus is acid etched uh, with the uh, with the markings here some of them have lost it does it bother me well I've got to be honest it bothers me more if this is blurred if this line is blurred um, which it's it's not this this is very slightly blurred which is interesting because it has a very nice engraving um, this one is very sharp and has lost its engraving um, my view is that I can still see the uh, hippocampus there I know it's an original case back and it's just either worn away it's, it probably hasn't even been polished out that it's probably just wear Amiga when they when they put the hippocampus on the back uh, deliberately acid etched it very faintly so that owners could remove it and put their own engraving on it uh, one last thing is if I'm really being um, super careful on a watch I take the bracelet out and I look at the lug holes and I make sure that they're round and I make sure they're not too close to the edge of the lug indicating a reprofiling of the case but in general there's not too much to worry about with a case if it looks good um, again you know I have my own views on the repolishing and other people have different views and that's fine I, I, I don't, I'm not saying I'm right and they're wrong I'm just saying what I like I like to buy a watch that looks nice um, I don't like to buy a watch that uh, has been you know obviously repolished in other words if that was all in a watch I probably wouldn't oh because I'm bound to get questions this uh, bezel is a modern service bezel and it's from an experiment I did because I was seeing a few brown bezels come onto the market and I didn't trust them and I actually bought one uh, it was a dot next to 90 and I called the guy up and I said this is a lovely bezel and it, it, it you know you don't you don't see brown bezels in Speedmasters not like in uh, uh, Rolexes and I said did you heat this and he said no of course not so I thought okay so I took a service bezel and I heated it and that's the result it's quite nice actually <laughs> it's quite nice but it's 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 it heated the case back is a it's a it's a sort of aftermarket sapphire case back I bought for a hundred dollars from somebody who was obviously making them in their garage and uh, <laughs> as you can see it's now sitting on my over polished case with my um, uh, service cooked bezel so um, the next thing we're going to look at uh, and it won't take long is we're going to look at the movement and the movement uh, is the 
861 and it's a great movement anyone can service it and we'll take a look at that in just a minute so the next step if you're buying um, the Speedmaster is to look inside um, if you're buying off photographs then hopefully the seller will already have done this but if you're buying from a private person and you're buying it because you feel the history and the provenance is very strong uh, it's not a deal breaker for me not to see inside the watch and it's a little risky sometimes but sometimes if you're dealing with a private person you're going to lose their confidence if you insist on them taking it to a jeweler and opening it up in addition you also run the risk of them taking it to a jeweler who will then uh, spoil the sale for you so the first thing to do is to open it up and as ever I use my friend Paul's opener if you want one of these openers uh, they're available um, through my site in fact my site just gives you his email so I'll, I'll put his email in the links so we undo it and I just love this opener I know I, keep, I go on about it in every video but I mean look at that every single slot has a tooth and there's no chance that you're going to slip and hurt things now I never uh, like to touch inside with my bare fingers and as you know I'm not wearing my serial killer gloves because <clears throat> I've had complaints from my wife <laughs> about them uh, she says that uh, you should like it um, so here we clearly see the case back marked 145022-69 has pearlage on the inside that's uh, this circular engine turning finish I've seen them without this um, I I don't know can't explain it now when I remove the dust cover uh, I use a blade and I use the blade just to get under uh, and between the so it just pops off there. and I remove it with tweezers as I mentioned before you know if you're viewing at an auction you'll find these dust covers are absolutely covered in fingerprints where people just stab it with their fingers and uh, I mind you I always service everything from an auction so here's the caliber 861 differs from the 321 uh, that you find in the earlier Speedmasters the earlier Speedmasters have the horseshoe bridge this has what I call the amoeba bridge and uh, it's you know once you've seen both you identify it immediately as an 861 but deep down inside there you'll see a engraving that also confirms it as an 861 these movements are or were made by Lemania or under license from Lemania and similar very similar movements have been used in other brands like Tissot uh, and Lemania themselves and they're a different color but the parts are often interchangeable so the only thing that we would be checking is that all the parts are copper colored and uh, indeed Amiga parts so it has an Amiga bridge and uh, a serial number that corresponds to the Amiga eight digit uh, series and we will take that serial number and compare it with other known examples just to make sure that it falls in line if you've got time get an extract it costs you 120 Swiss, Swiss francs and it'll confirm that it is a Speedmaster movement of course if you're talking about a watch like this at 4,000 pounds do you really want to spend the extra hundred and something pounds on uh, an extract well the short answer is yes of course <laughs> of course you do but um, uh, you really you should I don't know it, it's difficult because if you're if you're a really picky buyer and you're looking at 10 Speedmasters you don't want to be paying for 10 extracts and the other thing is that if you buy a Speedmaster that already has an extract then you're clearly buying it from somebody uh, a trader a dealer a collector and you're going to be paying full price and there's no harm in paying full price um, because that will give you the peace of mind that you're buying from somebody who um, if the watch does turn out to have a problem or be a problem watch and uh, you can always go back to them and say oi you sell me a duffer and uh, if they're proper people they will sort you out 
So there you have the 861 movement and uh, it's a very robust and, and simple movement compared to the 321 to service which you know some watchmakers have told me the 321 is perfectly simple we can service it and then they give me back a movement that needs adjustment or some problem happens to it my experience is that most watchmakers who are not established in 321 find certain challenges and difficulties in adjusting the 321 to function at optimal efficiency Whereas the three, the eight six one here, um, uh, this uh, this this always uh, gets through a watchmaker. He can he can do it. We've covered nearly everything. Uh, the what we haven't covered uh, the peripherals, the service parts. Now service parts are the the crown, the pushers, and the Hesselite crystal. Uh, the crystal has a little Amiga symbol right in the middle. And there is some variety in which one uh, you might have. I'm never bothered by a crystal. The only time that I take any notice of a crystal is in a four-digit reference, like a 2998. And the only reason I will look at that uh, and care about it is if the person says, I am the first owner, I've never had it serviced. And then I will look at that Amiga symbol and check that it is one of the ancient symbols. And if it is, it's another uh, sort of straw on the side of um, it being a truly original watch. But when it comes to one of these watches, you know what? It's probably going to be a service crystal. And you know what? It's going to be better for it. The crowns are either 32 tooth or 24 tooth. Um, the pushers are all 5 mil. Uh, this particular one has very clean necks, so I would assume them to be service pushers. No big deal, no harm done. Now the final thing with uh, uh, the uh, 69s to remember is that it's the 69s that go brown. Now. As I mentioned, this one is a watch that you can buy for about 4,000 sterling. So maybe $5,000, five a bit more. This watch, which is probably the best, um, uh, if you like, straightforward 69 that I've ever seen, um, is worth in the region of $12,000 or more. It's, it's super, super rare to find a watch like this. And as a result, it's worth a great deal of money. But you can spend more on uh, 69s, uh, I mean, the, the, with the so-called black dials that were black dials, and because you can go brown, and this is a brown, and this one's probably worth about, um, again, uh, 12,000 US dollars, 10,000 pounds in that sort of region. And the very last one I'll show you, I'll move that out of the way, the very last one I'll show you is this one. Uh, this is a very um, special watch for me. Um, I'll just show you the two browns. Uh, although the plots are slightly off, you know, it, it's, it's, and the bezel is slightly tired, it has this beautiful um, undulating color running through the dial, and it's very special. Uh, this one happens to have its original box, its original papers, so it is worth a very great deal of money, and it's very, very unusual to be able to find these on the open market because a collector like me will sniff it out if it's coming onto the market. Um, if it's a single owner watch that goes onto eBay, it'll be heavily bid um, by people like me who <laughs> we do watch eBay all the time. And uh, it's it's difficult. I'm afraid if, if you're new to 69s and you want one of these, you have to bite the bullet and pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the other way of getting it is pure luck. You you're in a jewelry shop somewhere and uh, they've got a, a trade in sixty nine Speedmaster and they've looked up on the net and they don't notice it's brown. It happens all the time, still today, that people sell a sixty nine and they just look it up and think, oh, it's just a sixty nine. I'll sell it for six thousand dollars or something, and it turns out to be a brown. Um. Above all, the last thing to remember on all of these watches is do you like it and can you 
live with yourself if you suddenly find yourself having to spend, sell it for 30 percent less than you paid for it because you desperately need the money because that's always going to be the case don't buy your first speedmaster thinking that you're going to make you know ten thousand dollars on it uh, or even one thousand dollars on it because you're not you're really not there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people looking for speedmasters all the time because it's what they do for fun i'm one of them if there's a good watch out there and it has a modicum of public exposure i've seen it and so have all my friends and we no doubt will talk about it and discuss it behind your back <laughs> but doesn't don't stop trying i mean just keep going and find a watch you really like bid on it buy it have fun with it it's um it's very satisfying and the best way to learn about any of these watches is to buy one because once you buy one you'll know what i'm talking about when you you know you get lost in the dial you sort of look at the brown of this dial and you get sort of soaked into it anyway there you are um if you like this video i need you to subscribe to the channel and press the bell and the reason is because otherwise youtube pushes my videos into the back end and beyond and you're going to end up with nothing but uh, TikTok videos and things you're not interested in being shoved into your feed so helps you helps me and so uh, do subscribe click on the bell and if you do that you're going to see more videos from me possibly even going in depth with the final 69s um, that you will see this is the rarest of all the 69s possibly 50 made and um, but that's not the subject of today's today's was all about trying to find you the best 69 you can and if you uh, want to hear more videos just to uh, leave a comment and say what you'd like to see and I'll do my best uh, although lockdown seems to be uh, easing so we may all find ourselves less time on our hands but uh, I've enjoyed making the video I hope you like it thanks for watching